thanks for joining me for another video. So today we're going to be making these Let It Snow cards. We're actually going to make the one on top on video. However, when I got started recording this video, I realized that there was a little bit more information and another technique that I wanted to share with you regarding one of the products that I used in the first card. So I went ahead and filmed a little clip of me creating one of the backgrounds that I used for the additional cards. And as I was kind of contemplating what I was going to say over the top of that clip, I realized that there was a little bit more information, again, even further, that I wanted to give you. So I created a third background using the exact same products and technique, and then I just finished those two backgrounds that I had created out using the same products that I used in this initial card. So I'm starting out this card with an A2 size piece of whipped cream cardstock. And on top of that, I am going to be blending some Cool Pool True Color Fusion ink. I am using a small dauber dowel to do this. And I originally started, you can see me dabbing off on the glass there. Um, I do have glass over my entire work surface. And I had been seeing where some people have been trying this technique where they dab the ink off, the initial little bit of ink off on their glass mat before coming to their card. I didn't see where it was making a difference for me. Now I have a fairly light touch as I do ink blending anyway, and I have an older sponge on here. You can actually see where it's kind of shedding a little bit on my card. I did replace it after filming this. However, I, I wasn't seeing where it was making a difference for me. Now that I have a new sponge on my dauber for this color, I may try it again in a future video, but I just started going directly to the card after a couple of tries with that. So now I'm just cleaning off the ink on my work surface, and I'm going to go ahead and take the Snowflake stamp from the all year long stamp set, and I am going to stamp around the edges of this ink blending. So because the ink blending is kind of sheer, I can stamp over it with this same color and you're going to be able to see the snowflakes, but they feel like they're part of that kind of spot of color. So I have that done. And then I'm gonna come in with my sparkle silk. Now you can see all that sparkle that's just swirling around in this sparkle silk. This is one of my favorite products. I absolutely love the little punch that this adds to projects. So I'm just splattering that over the top of my project. And this is the product that I have a clip at the end of the video talking about technique with. So. I've got that splattered all over my project and you can see the shimmer and shine that that adds into this particular spot of color. Because we're doing snowflakes, I think it adds just the perfect amount of icy shimmer to the projects. So just cleaning off the splatter from my work surface and then I am going to die cut my snowflakes. Now I am using the Snow Blooms die set. This comes with three snowflakes. This larger one, which I am going to cut out of vellum. And then there are two smaller ones, which I'm going to cut out of mere silver paper. Because these are very, very detailed dies, a little bit on the smaller side, I'm lining up my paper to the outside edges of my die cut machine. This is going to give a little bit cleaner of a cut than it would if I ran it right through the center of the machine. Because they are so delicate, this will actually have a little bit more pressure. The bar that's doing the cutting actually will have a little bit more pressure. And because I'm cutting mirror paper, you will see that I had put a piece of type paper over the top before I put that second plate on. That keeps any scratches in that second plate, that top plate, from actually transferring onto my mirror paper. So I can reuse that piece. So at this point, I'm going to trim down my background. Um, you've seen this in multiple videos. I just like to wait until I actually have the background kind of put together to do the trimming. It gives me the ability to place it where I want. So I'm actually just trimming an eighth of an inch all the way around because I kind of had my placement where I needed it anyway. 
So now I'm going to lay out my snowflakes on my background. And I am going to be using some gems on this card. So I am just dotting this glue everywhere that there's going to be a gem on the card. That way the gem's going to cover up the adhesive. So I'm using a clear block to hold that into place. Because there's a little bit of moisture in that liquid glue, vellum has a tendency to kind of curl up on it. So this actually will hold it in place while it stays down. And then I'm going to add these gems to it. I'm starting out with the largest gem in the center. The next circle of gems that I am putting around the card is just one step smaller from that largest gem. And then I'll go again one step smaller again for the gems on the very outside edge of the card. This is a very blingy card. I really like snow themed cards to have a lot of shine, a lot of shimmer to them. I just think it really accents the kind of icy feel of that type of a card. And now that I have all the gems in place, I'm placing my mirror snowflakes kind of where I want them. I like to kind of space everything out before I actually adhere it down. That just gives me an idea visually what it's going to look like. So I'm just going to use a little bit more of that liquid adhesive and just dab it on the back of each of these snowflakes so that the adhesive is hidden. Now that I have these adhered down, I'm going to actually be putting my stamp for my sentiment directly on the card panel. So I'm using the chambray shirt ink. Now this is a very much kind of a brighter, more mid-tone blue shade. I like the combo with the cool pool. Um, because I haven't used this stamp before, I was just stamping it off on a piece of scratch paper just to make sure it was going to stamp cleanly. Like I said, I like this particular combo of colors, the chambray shirt and the cool pool. I think it's a very wintry feel with these. And I trimmed off the excess of the snowflakes that was hanging off the edge of the card. And then I'm going to attach this card panel to an A2 size card front made from whipped cream cardstock. So I'm just using foam squares to go ahead and attach that. I use a lot of foam squares. I like to make sure that my card front stays where I want it. <laughs> so I'm just going to remove the backing off of those foam squares and then I'm going to attach this card front to my card base and that is going to complete the card for today. So this card has lots and lots of shine and shimmer and that shimmer was that sparkle look that I used earlier. So I wanted to talk to you a little bit more about the silks. These are a super fun product. They are water-based, so there's a lot of fun techniques that you can do with them. And I wanted to share with you how to create some really fun, lazy watercolor type backgrounds. Watercolor backgrounds are kind of difficult for me because they're, I have a really hard time making them random. So with the silks, it's pretty easy to be pretty random. I'm showing you this on dry paper and I'm taking that cool pull silk. Now the easy way for me to use this product is to take it between my middle finger and my thumb 
hold it horizontally over my paper and tap the brush. You want to make sure you're not swiping against the edge of that bottle because you don't want to actually remove the product from your brush. So the closer you are to your project, the more control you have over where that splatter goes. The further away you are from your project, the less control you have, but the more surface area you're going to cover. Tapping the silks off onto dry paper, like I'm doing here, gives you a very concentrated little spot of color or a concentrated little spot of shine on your project. This is fun to make really nice splatter backgrounds or to add a little splatter to a layer on your card. But it also works to help you do a really super easy watercolor background. So what I'm doing here is setting a clear block with a piece of watercolor paper over the top of it. And I'm using my media mister to wet that watercolor paper. I want to actually have water on the surface of this paper. So you can take your silk and just pull the brush out and just directly dab it onto your card if you want to be very careful about where that color is going. I like to splatter it. So because of that water that's on the surface of the paper, what you're going to see is a concentrated spot of color where that color first hits your paper. And then the color is going to bloom around that as it dissolves in that water that's on there. Now this works the same with the sparkle silk. It's harder to see on the video, but this is going to add blooms of sparkle silk across my project that when it hits the light, you're going to be able to see. I'm going to go ahead and dab that with a baby wipe so that I can get rid of that pooling that was happening on the edge. And this is why I like to put it up on the clear block because then it has everything goes to the edge because it does kind of curl a little bit once it gets wet. I am going to go ahead and use my heat gun to dry this particular panel so that I can move straight on to a card with it. However, you could do a lot of these particular panels and just leave them overnight to dry as well. I love the silks. They're super fun and there's a lot of different techniques that you can do with them. I have watercolored with them and done a lot of stuff, but I really like this lazy watercolor technique for a nice, fun, kind of artsy background. One thing I will tell you with the silks is that when you do use them on dry paper, the gold color is quite orangey. It's still usable, but it is just a little bit on the orange side of gold. And the Cranberry Bliss tends to dry quite dark. I did use it with that same lazy watercolor technique on one of the cards shown here. However, when it's used directly on dry paper, it does tend to dry a little bit dark. So just keep that in mind. Anyway, I finished out these cards using the same dies and stamps that I used on the first card. And that finishes out my three let it snow cards for today. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you found inspiration and I hope you have a wonderful day. Thanks for watching. Much love to you all.